Hi folks and welcome back to another fly fishing video. I'm joined by my old pal Jock Kettles, which can mean only one thing. It's time for the Kit Kat Cup. Jock, it's great to see you, pal. Oh, it's great to see you, Lindsay. And can you tell the folk about the fabulous backdrop behind us? Well, Lindsay, welcome to Glencourse Reservoir, which is about seven miles from Edinburgh city centre. Ideal for anybody visiting from Edinburgh or staying in Edinburgh. So, Lindsay. No, no, wait, 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 wait. So, because I've come back to Scotland, no. this year, no, no. This year, I've upped the production value no. and I've brought in a special guest to do the introduction. Better than me. I, I don't know if it'll be better than you, but let's roll the footage. As long as friends have gone fishing together, there has been competition. The biggest fish, the most fish, the list goes on. Oh, and the prize anywhere from a single pound note to simple bragging rights. The Kit Kat Cup, though, has become somewhat of an institution over the years. Fished in good humor, but with the hard edge of competition. Held over three venues, Glencourse, Loch Levin, and the Lake of Manteith. Who will win this year's event? Without further ado, let's get into it. Obviously, for the, the, the discerning viewers amongst you, you'll realize that I didn't get Morgan Freeman in to do the intro, but I thought it'd be a bit of fun for me and Jock. Oh, and uh, So Jock's going to tell us a wee bit about the history of Glencourse and uh, yep. the size and the dimensions of the, the reservoir. I've never fished here, Jock, but I do remember years ago coming up for a walk. We come and walked your dug up here and you said to me, Lindsay, you've got to have the inside drift. And why is that, that so important? Was over, that was over a year ago, and Lindsay's remembered that. And he's come <laughs> up here and he says, Jock, we'll have a gentleman's agreement. Because it's your local water, I'm on the inside drift. Well, I'm still not too happy about that, but I've agreed. So you're getting the inside drift. So, so just tell the folks, because a lot of people will be wondering, well, what's, what's that? What's yep. the advantage to the inside drift, especially here at Glencourse? I'll give you a little bit of history about Glencourse. Obviously, it's a reservoir. It's got a dam which is 35 metres long. The dam was built in 1820, or they started building the dam in 1820, and they finished it in 1824. So that's four years. The reservoir is about 65 feet deep at its deepest point, but all the feeding for the reservoir gets blown in off the heather. Ah, and you can see, I mean, the, the reservoir's surrounded by hills and trees and bushes, so there'll be plenty of food coming in, eh? And because of the hills round the features, it has all these drop-offs, and these drop-offs tend to hold fish. So if you've got the inside drift, what I mean by that is you're closest to the bank, it's always an advantage at Glen Course. So keep that in mind. It's a nice size. It depends on how far out I push you into the middle, I suppose. Well, eh? None of that nonsense. <laughs> It's a, nice, it's a nice size, it's 49 acres. It's a boat venue only, so you're never going to have any problem with meeting bank anglers. Aye. So we can get right into the banks. Both of us, Lindsay, can get right into the banks. <laughs> and just so you're aware, folks, Jock's uh, brought his own engine. So if you are coming up, unless you want to be rowing the boat round the reservoir, what you need to do is bring up your own electric engine. Yep, it is electric engines, no petrol. You can also hire them from the fishery. I think it's £15 for a battery and an engine. But most people these days I've got bring, the rain, bring, their own, bring their own. And we'd like to mention today that Glen Course has actually sponsored myself and Lindsay for our day's fishing. So they've given us the boat and they've given us the fishing for free. So I'd like to say a big thanks on behalf of myself and Lindsay yep. to Billy, Bill Taylor, and to Kenny Knox for actually giving us the boat and the fishing today. Uh, first yeah. class. Well, uh, driving up from the, the London area yesterday was absolutely horrific. The rain came down really hard. It's rained most of the night and when we've turned up at the, the reservoir this morning, the road just here is, is absolutely flooded and boys that haven't got wellies and waders are having to climb over the wall to get into the boats. And I've had the drone up already this morning and as you can see, the water's fairly covered. We're still hopeful. Some boys have actually turned up and gone home, Jock, eh? Yep, yep. Well, we'll no mention any names. Mike. <laughs> Aye, so it's a shame, Jock, because you were saying a couple of days ago it was crystal clear. Lindsay, you're not seeing Glen Course at its best today. Uh, that's hopefully it fishes well, but it is really coloured. Uh, that's perfect, Jock. Well, what we're going to do next is we're going to get all our kit in the boat, we're going to get afloat, and we'll be setting up and we'll talk tactics. Well, we're actually afloat now and we're going to set up for the day's fishing. As we've come across, where the water is really coloured. Now, I'm not making any excuses, but uh, I think it might not be quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. 
So Jock, how are you going to set up to tackle these conditions today? It's quite tricky Lindsay, I've never seen it this coloured before. Um, I think I'm going to start in a three sweep with a couple of boobies right. to make a bit of disturbance. So fish as close to the edge as possible, make some disturbance with the boobies and really stick close to the And to the try floors. and get the fish that are in maybe the, the lighter coloured water. So we can maybe, maybe encourage a reaction. Aye. I think fish will be really toiling to see this today. Conditions are what they are. Yeah, well, this is it. And, you know, we talk about, you know, we did jokingly say, well, some of the boys have gone home, but they actually have gone home. And, you know, if you're coming out for a day's fishing, you might think, ah, there's better days to fish. But what I would say is you might get hit by a bus tomorrow. So you've got to get as much fishing in as you can. You're exactly right, Lindsay, and um, I mean, Glen Gorse has got plenty of fish in it. We're bound to come across a fish sometime, so let's see. Let's make that happen. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to set up with the uh, the three sweet, Lindsay. I think I'm just going to fish three flies. I was actually considering just fishing the two. Well, I was just going to stick one on Jock, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking maybe a, a booby snake, something like that, you know, that's going to cause the disturbance and be big enough to be... Yeah. seen in, the, in this colour of water but we'll yep. see how we go I mean you're on the three I think I, I keep I keep debating whether to to have a midge tip on because we'll be fishing quite close to the edge well, or I'm starting just... with a with a fast glass is what I'm thinking Well, I come out uh, on a sweep three uh, with the idea of having two dark boobies on and two dark comments in the middle. Myself and Lindsay are looking at the water and we're looking at the, the clarity and like Lindsay said, it's about six inches, so we're a wee bit, we're a wee bit downhearted. I just had a crack and take there on uh, a little common in the middle. It's probably the smallest fly I've got on. It's probably a, it's a size 12. It just shows you that they will pick the small fly, so we really just need to up our game. Persevere. And persevere. Oh, and I'm sure they'll come. Well done, Joy. I mean, we know the water's just really coloured, but what we also know is there's plenty of fish in front of us. I think the, the game today, what we've got to do is cover water, Jock, it, and hopefully we'll come across them. Every time I see that, Booby Lindsay. I think it's a fish that wake in the water. Aye. Actually, that it reminds me of when uh, we started the Kit Kat Cup all those years ago. In Buell. At Buell, aye. And uh, just to let folks know, we, we we used to go fishing together every every Saturday or Sunday, whatever day was best. That was a red letter day, that. At Buell Water and. Um, it was kind of my local, I'm, a, I'm only an hour for Buell and we'd, we'd meet up and we'd, we'd go fishing together and I'd sort of, I'd sussed out this way of fishing with a fast glass and it was basically the candy floss booby on a single, a single fly and I would fish it on a 10 foot leader and... I didn't believe you. And Jock, I, said, I said to Jock, I said, I've got this method, it's absolutely lethal pal, you're going to have to come in and try it and... The, the day we turned up, actually, there was an England qualifier on the that's go, right, and um, right. the, the Lord asked us to stay away for the, the fleet of boats, which I thought, oh, well, fair enough, you Where know. Where did they go? They went They went to Chingley Wood, and I said, oh, we'll go up Hook Strait, and I'd set up with this, this method, the fast glass and the single booby. And uh, Jock had set up, uh, as, you, as we did fish in them days, with uh, probably... Three flies or something. Three flies, three or four flies, and... Uh, we gets up to, to Hook Street, quite a famous part of Buell Water, and and I'm sitting waiting, and Jock's fishing away, and he's going, what are you doing? I said, well, there's no point in casting if you can't see a fish. He's going, oh, you're a slaver, I'd get fishing. I said, no, no, look, oh, look, there's one there. And I cast out, and I popped the booby on the surface. That bow wave behind it, remember? And then there was a massive bow wave behind it, and... Uh, as soon as the fly went under, because I was on a fast glass, the fly went under the surface and the fish can hit it much more easily. When it's on the surface, fish swim like that, it's very difficult for them to hit it. But once it goes under the water, it's easy prey for them. And uh, I got the fish to the boat and Jock just thought, oh, that's a fluke. I, I said just, that to you, it was a fluke. It's just a fluke. And um, 
So, the, 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 you know, I'm hanging on again, and Jock says, you honestly going to wait to cast until you see a fish? I said, aye, I'm, that's how I'm going to fish today. And uh, he's like, you're off your head. And uh, sure enough, another fish popped its head up. I covered it, popped the booby. Same result. And of course, I was changed within a couple of minutes. <laughs> Jock's like that. Give me one of them candy floss things. He changed and uh, we went on to have an absolutely astounding day, didn't we? I mean, it was just like hope you're going a, to finish a red letter day. I hope you're going to finish this story correctly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let you tell the rest of the story, Jock. Well, we had such a great day and uh, I think we had... 16 each we had. 16 each. And we decided that... Uh, we we're just about finished, but we needed a winner. We're quite competitive, me and Lindsay. <laughs> and, no, we're no, we're no. <laughs> and uh, so Lindsay says to me, he says, OK, Jock, the next fish, the winner. I says, the winner of what? He says, wait, wait, and he went in his bag at the time. And he pulls out this Kit Kat. He says, the Kit Kat, the Kit Kat cup. Well, little did I know. <laughs> He already had hooked the fish. And he's sort of figure eating, and I could see his line twitching at the end, and I'm going to myself, that looks a bit strange. Anyway, he pulls the boat out a wee bit, of, and he starts figure eating again, and his rod buckled over. And it, it, he goes, yes, I've got one, Jock, I've got one, I've got one. <laughs> well, I never clicked on that it was on, obviously. So I says, right, fair enough, you're the Kit Kat champion, so he ate the Kit Kat. And uh, I gave you a couple of fingers. He, that you know doesn't what? sound right, does it? You know, you know what? <laughs> he never actually told me for about two seasons that he had that. In fact, I'm wanting the shield removed for the cup. <laughs> I've just thought about that. Aye, it was oh, a great was a day, though. Day. An absolute red letter day. And, and when we went in, we had 16 and 17. Um, Jeff Latter we bumped into. Uh, Jeff was a a character at Buell, um, anyone that sort of fished Buell maybe 10, 15 years ago will remember were, Jeff as a... They were fishing the England Eliminator. And uh, I think their top, but obviously they were fishing to, back then it was an eight fish kill and that was it, you got a time bonus after you'd finished. And I don't think anyone had caught eight. Yeah. I think the best bag was six or something. And Jeff just thought me and Jock were making it up, but it was just one of them days, you know, and what... It, it, it gives you a lesson, actually. So nearly all the boats in the qualifier were in Chingley Corner. They're yep. in one concentrated area on top of each other. Me and Jock, we didn't see another boat all day. We, we kind of stayed away for the boys that were competing in the qualifier, and we caught a load of fish. Uh, oh, and, that's and, and that's how we did it. We were looking, targeting rising fish, not with dry flies, but with a, with a single booby, and it, it worked a treat. And that was the start. That was the start of the Kit Kat Cup. Aye, it's a, it's a day that I can recall vividly because it, it was just so good. It was a long, you know, long. I think everyone that goes fishing for a long time, they'll 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 have days that will stick in their memory for whether it be the company they were in or the fish that the special fish that they caught. Definitely. It'll always be in their memories. And I think the older you get, you start appreciating them days, Jocker. Yeah? Definitely, definitely. All right, so there's the, there's the Kit Kat Cup. There's where it started. Aye, that's Buell history. Water down in Kent. Aye, I think Buell's thriving now since it's gone any method, but I'm not so sure that it's the, the fly fishery it once was. Uh, I think that's, you know, I think um, when you're competing with boys that are throwing power bait in and they've got five or six rods out the boat, I mean, I'm told, I've not been for a couple of years, but I'm told now it's got much better as the course anglers are a bit more educated about what we require when we're in a drifting boat. They're no yeah. longer chucking leads and uh, stuff towards you or motoring right across your drift as you're going down the reservoir. Like, it'll never be the same as what it was 20 years ago, I don't think. Ah, yeah, well, but these fisheries have got to survive, Lindsay. Absolutely, Jock, I totally agree. Um, <laughs> But I think maybe in Scotland, you know, I could never see them allowing boys to come out here and throw power bait in the, the locks, the hill locks like this. No. You know, I think this will always be a fly fishery. Yeah. And I'm grateful for it.
fuck? <laughs> Oh, 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 yeah, you're okay. Like that. Size of that, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, Lindsay, look at the size of that. It would have to be on the point. Oh, that's five plus, Lindsay. Aye. Oh, aye. Put the tail on it, John. Well, we're going to go into the weeds. Oh. Look Is at it? that fish! Look at that fish! Well, that's the first round of the Kit Kat Cup over and done with, and uh, it, it, it couldn't have gone any better for me, I might say, but I think, you know, Jock, this is his backyard, but what maybe helped me out today was the conditions. Lindsay, they were absolutely appalling, weren't they? Lindsay, you're, you're doing yourself an a, a injustice. You fished fantastic today. Okay, you just, really did. I just copied what you were doing. Well, no, <laughs> you done it, you pulled it out of the bag, you really want to take that Kit Kat cup home. <laughs> So the scores on the doors today is Lindsay picked me, Lindsay had four to the net, I had three to the net. And I, I also had the biggest fish, so I'm cock a hoop oh, today. That was but a I think, um, I didn't think, I've got to be honest, Jock, I didn't think we were going to catch any fish. Well, I, I looked at the water and thought, I nah, no chance. I suggested we go somewhere else and come back here on Sunday. Aye, uh, but you know, we, the water's Kenny's, like drinking chocolate, it really is. Well, Willy Wonka. It's yeah. Willy Wonka kit, quite literally, yeah. innit? So, so uh, that's the first round over and done with. We're so going the, to pressure's, go back. the pressure's on kettles? Uh, you're a leading specialist, though. <laughs> well, I, I don't know about uh, that, Lindsay. I think you've slipped Alan Smith a couple of bob no. to just keep me off the no, inside no. line. So, pal, <laughs> listen, congratulations, well Brilliant. done. You obviously want this Kit Kat Cup. <laughs> My wife said, bring it home, or did he come home? Ah, oh, brilliant. <laughs> it's an Earth-type dam. It was built, believe it or not, in 1820. That's wrong. Is that when you were in the army? That's wrong. It's 18. 